Hello everyone, welcome back to a review video today. So I'll be showing you guys off the Afghan Helmand Province present day uh, Taliban army man from Armies and Plastic. So this set does come with 18 figures, 132, 54 millimeters. 132 for, I think, American scale and the rest of the world's the 54 millimeters, which is like two inches. So this set, like I said, comes with 18 figures in this little uh, bag you will get. So, there is all sorts of poses I'll be showing you right now. If you guys enjoyed that little quick stop motion be in this video, and the stop motion is going to do for each mold. So anyways, this is the RPG mold. I don't know if it's RPG 7 or something like that. But anyways, I did cover some of these details in my haul video, so I'm going to go over them again. So right here is our rocket trooper right here for the Taliban. And he has the same good details across his entire robe, or I don't know what it's called, technically. But I know the hat is a turban. But the details and the grooves and the uh, where the, col the clothes fold at, at his waist and the groin area, is insanely good. Especially on the pants. The folds, you can easily tell the shoe. And you tell that the sandals, I think these are what these are. Or foot wraps, or possibly shoes can't really tell well, are separated from the ankle, and the ankle separated from the pants, as it's like it's detailed in its own lovely way. And the base plate too, it does have texture on it, which is awesome. I think all army, armies and plastic army men are just like this. So here on the back side, you see the back end of the turban hanging down. I don't know what this exact part's called. But it is so well detailed, you can easily tell it apart from it being like directly part of the uh, back of the uh, figure. And you can easily see where it ties off at the top of his head, which is awesome. And the facial hair and the ears, you can actually tell where the ears are because they put like a hole in there with their machines or something like that. And the eyes, you can actually tell where they are. Like, compared to other armies of plastic um, army men, depending on what color you get, you can't really see facial features well. But this is immaculate. Especially the scope on his RPG. Oh, sorry about that. Kevin didn't want to focus. It is insanely good. And you can also tell the hand apart from the uh, wrist and the uh, arm and stuff. It's just so nice. And you can tell different parts of the um, rocket, too. You can tell this is the quite obviously the... Uh, grenade about to be fired upon someone and you get the main body in the back area where the uh dunnage and the uh flames and stuff will come out when you fire it so he's insanely detailed even this ear right here i'm gonna refocus this again is insanely good so this is the rocket trooper or rpg taliban so on to our second figure Here's the running slash marching pose, one of the two within the set. This set does come with 18 army men, but anyways, onto this lovely army man right here. Same thing as before, the base plate is detailed, the clothing is so good. So this guy is wearing a form of boots, I believe so. Ignore these little holes right here, that's from the um, injection mold stuff is, to take part in the mold. It's insanely good, besides that little issues, which just is normal for army men. So his, he has an AK-47, which looks immaculately good. You can see, tell the difference between the entire gun, the barrel, and the magazine in the finger uh, guard area, where the trigger is. And his beard is amazing looking too, especially his hat. I don't know what his hat is called, but yeah. But besides that, it's insanely detailed. The ears are there kind of, but the beard kind of overtakes it. Which is alright. But you tell here is like where it's some type of flick system. Or something similar to a flick system. That the United States Army uses kind of. I think so. I'll say, I'm going to call it a flick system. You know it's not. I don't know what it's actually called. It's not partaking their gear. And I don't want to research this stuff. For other reasons. But yeah he's insanely well done. So I'm going to go to the third figure. Figure number three. So this is basically the guy that's like behind the wall, like looking at the side, seeing if anyone's coming, tell his boys to ambush him. Maybe he's wrapped around the side wall and shooting with his pistol, or he's commanding or leading a march. So this guy is insanely done well. 
he has two pistol, I mean, two weapons on him, my bad. He has his AK-47 and his pistol, or his handgun, I would say. But one thing I say about his handgun, I just realized this now, that the finger actually is molded directly through the trigger guard area, which is insanely nice looking, too. His folds is close, like every other figure, is insanely well done. And I believe he is wearing some form of running shoes or loafers from the looks of this, which are insanely done well too. And especially his torso, he has, looks like he has a buttoned up shirt with his vest on top of it with like a some type of vest, like a flick system currently on him. His facial features are really, really done well, I would say. It's immaculate how this figure was done because this figure you will see is basically all the other poses in this set are basically the same minus um, this guy right here are all the same guy basically or you will have less different other people since they did all dress the same. But besides that, the turban is, looks like a brain basically but it has all the correct folds and stuff too. But the eyes and nose and mouth you actually can tell on this figure where it's at and the ears you can kind of see it but it's still there which is very cool to see so in all honesty this was a pretty good figure so far this is probably my second favorite out of this lot but anyways on to the fourth figure here is figure number four this is the alternate pose of the marching slash running pose so he does have that flat hat again, a little chef's hat, I would call call it technically. But this pose is same as everything else. You can tell the shoes and the pants apart. The uh, creases in the uh, pants are nice. And his entire wardrobe is so nice looking well done. You can tell the sleeves apart from the uh, vest. I would say this is. Or, yeah, I think this is a vest on top of his actual clothes. Which is well done and very nice looking too. Facial wise, if I can't want to focus, is extremely well done. Even though he looks like kind of like, it's like a gorilla, which is probably the mold itself. It's extremely well done. The facial hair is extremely nice, including the full facial hair, beard, mustache, and the, and the sideburns. He has a full set of hair on his face, which is extremely cool. Including there's hair on the back side of his head, too. I think I covered that on the uh, other pose. But I don't know if I did or not. If I didn't, I'm going to grab it anyway see if there's hair on the back. Yep, there is, but there's like barely there compared to this uh, figure. But he's extremely well done. Armies of Plastic did an amazing, immaculate job on this figure. So, now, I'm going to do figure number five, or pose number five. Hello, this is figure number five, or pose number five. This is the crouching pose right here, which is, basically, I said earlier, the same guy as the other ones, besides the flat hat guys. So, this is the guy crouching with the AK-47, and I would say the same thing again, is the pant creases, the clothing creases, are extremely well done. And they look super good. Like, look at this. He is so amazing looking. Including his little flick system. And his uh, vest going over it. Is extremely nice. The shoes, the pants ratio. You can tell them apart. Like with every other figure. So we're going to check on his face real quick. So he does kind of have a full set of uh, facial hair. He doesn't have a mustache from the look of it. Okay, he does. He has a little mustache right there. I can see a little bit, but it's pretty small compared to the uh, previous figure. It's actually extremely well done. Like, same thing earlier, the turban is extremely nice. The AK-47 and his hand positioning is extremely well done. His hand does have a little flashing right here, which is an easy cleanup, but it's not necessarily needed. But he's extremely good looking, but the AK-47 on this side is not well detailed. Compared to its opposite side. So I'm going to check the other figure. If it's like that on that one too. Which it is. So that sucks. If you want to do a film. You have to do it from the left side. With these uh, figures that are crouching. Which is alright. These are meant to be played with. But anyways. 
it's time to go to the last pose. All right, so this is the last pose for this little set. So this is the Rifleman pose, which sucks. There's only one of these guys, which is basically everyone else has the flat hat guys. So anyways, we're going to take the last look at this guy. So like I said before, the clothing details, the footwear, but there's a little flashing right here, which is all right. But he just looks so amazing. The folds in his clothes. His neck is <laughs> kind of covered up by this little ejection uh, mold line thingy where they break off before they put it in the bag. So the same thing with the crouching guy too, actually. His AK on the opposite side is not detailed, which sucks. But it's all right. Facial-wise, let's look at his eyes. Oh, the camera's more focused for once. Uh-oh. There we go. Um, He looks kind of messed up. You can tell he has a messy beard and mustache and stuff. But kind of overtakes other portions of his face. But you can tell he has the nose and eyes. Um, Ears? I can't really see them. Yeah, I think the ears are covered by the turban on the uh, right side. Let's check the left side. The left side has a little bit of an ear. But I guess the right side does not. But anyways, I genuinely hope you guys enjoyed this review so far. But now I'm going to do the scaling. There will not be a stop motion for showcasing this. So anyways, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so this is the scaling portion of this review. So we'll start left to right. So over here, we have our standard army men right here. We have a matchbox, which is similarly same size as BMC, armies of plastic, and um, I forgot what other brand are all the same size, basically. But they're pretty decently if you have a BMC-based Army Man collection or if you collect Matchbox if you're rich enough. I don't know about Airfix because I don't own any Airfix. I only own like copies of those and Matchbox copies. Since this is my only Matchbox set is the uh, British 8th Army Combat Infantry Unit, which is the only stuff I have. I can compare with Matchbox wise because the other stuff I have for these guys are the uh, duplicate ones. So, yeah, they're pretty much the same size for the uh, Armies of Plastics and Matchbox and BMC are the same. So, this right here is your standard little army man right here. And he dwarfs this poor little guy. He, like, he completely dwarfs him. So, in your films, you could use standard army men with these guys, but you can't do them like exactly close up. You have to do a little distance away to give it some leeway, make it look like they're the same size. So that's pretty cool, actually, that they match up with uh, an old company. So up here is these shooting poses with three versions of army men, three different sizes. So this is some random brand. I know Timmy makes these big guys still, but I'm gonna check the bottom. Yeah, that yeah, doesn't have a brand. Uh, stamp on it. So right here is the World War One or Prussian or Franco-Prussia War um, Germans. And the Taliban makes them look super small compared to standing next to each other of the same brand. I'm going to grab a um, Zulu Brit real quick. See their size? See? So there's not really a size comparison for armies of plastic products. I think they're all different sizes. So I'm going to grab a uh, World War One Brit real quick. Not Well, yeah, or Canadian or British guy right here real quick. So him and the German are possibly the same size. Yeah, they're the same size, but these two are just bigger than the rest of them. So this guy could easily fit in with this guy here, which sucks because this guy's like in the mid section of scaling wise. Which is pretty cool, actually, if you think about it. You have, like, different size of Iron Man. You can create your own little lore about how, why they're tall and stuff like that. Next up is the crouching pose, which this guy matches up with this little SWAT figure here. I don't know what brand it is. It's a random Chinese company. Because the only thing you see here so far is Matchbox and Armies of Plastic stuff. But, yeah, these are random companies that make these figures. <laughs> Sorry about that. Cold going on, probably. But yeah, so here he is compared to the little SWAT figure. He absolutely dwarfs him. Or they're equal size, I would say. Because these guys are like almost three inches 
in their actual figures because I own some of these guys, but painted. So he's a decent size. But the problem I have with this is that this crouching pose is the same exact size as your standard army men, which is insane. I don't have Mars or any knockoff versions of these guys to compare them to the actual figure. But and genuinely, I hope you guys all enjoy this video. I will be going now. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you guys later and bye-bye.